Hi friends, I'm Sherry and this is Gardening in the North and I have some things to harvest today and I thought why not bring you along? We can walk through the garden, look at some things, harvest some stuff and talk about a couple things that I'm going to do differently next year. So for those of you that are new to the channel, I am in Growing Zone 5B, Ontario, Canada and I am growing in roughly 20 raised garden beds that we built from recycled barn material and a roofing material from the house that was previously here on this property. So let's get started. Okay, I don't know if you can see. <gasps> This arch trellis here is for my tromboncino and rapaconte. And so those two types of squash are very similar. It just depends on which seed company you get them from. Um, I've just really started calling both types of seed uh, tromboncino. It's just easier to think of it as one type of squash. On the corner of the bed here, and I've done this to a couple of my beds, you'll see here that I have this uh, squash plant growing out of here. It is called a khaki squash. Now the package said that the germination rate was extremely low, so I planted a lot of them. And uh, yeah, the germination rate was not low. They basically all germinated, which is why I've had to plant them everywhere. So this is what the khaki squash looks like right now. And then once it uh, starts to ripen, I believe it turns more of an orangey color if I remember correctly. This here is the back of one of the beds. So rather than showing you the front, the front has a lot of holy basil in it. Really wanted to show you the back, all of the tomatoes that are growing here and the fact that some of them are ripening already. So this tomato here is Prairie Fire. I believe I got them from Baker Creek. I've not tried one of these ones before. Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. Mmm. Oh my God, that just might be my new favorite tomato. That is so good and so juicy. Yum. Okay, so let's head over to the onions. I want to show you how they're coming along after I've been spooning them. The onions are doing amazing. I've been uh, fertilizing them roughly every two weeks. I just recently fertilized the whole garden with a liquid fish fertilizer that I get off of Amazon, but it's from BC, BC, Canada. And I really love how the garden reacts to it. I just wish that uh, I could get more of it for a cheaper price. <laughs> Here in this bed is a ton of basil, holy basil to be specific. So one of the things that I did this year was plant a lot more basil. So as I said, this is holy basil. I planted blue spice basil, it, which really does look very similar to the holy basil. It's just has a slightly different um, smell to it. Still fabulous, but very similar. I also planted cinnamon basil in with my tomatoes because they say that planting your basil with your tomatoes helps to keep the pests away. So I did that. I also planted red Reuben basil, which I have to say I am loving. So I've been using a lot of this holy basil and the red Reuben to make basil tea and I constantly have these big one liter or was it one gallon? I think they're one gallon mason jars in my fridge of basil tea. But I think I am gonna be a little bit smarter about it next year. This basil grows crazy fast and I don't need a whole bed of it next year. I could probably do a third of a bed and still 
harvest what I need for tea as well as saving what I'm going to need for the winter months for loose leaf tea. And so I think what I'm going to do is a third of a bed for the holy basil. I'd really like to try the basil leaf that they are the leaf basil I think what it is uh, the very large uh, sized basil leaves I think that might be kind of fun this here is my strawberry bed I've shown you this before I've shown it to you and I've had a lot more excitement in my voice than I do now you'll see that there are strawberry flowers I have had many strawberry flowers however I have not eaten a single strawberry from this bed. So we have a family of chipmunks that are just loving these strawberries. Beside it is the chamomile bed. I know I showed you this chamomile bed in the last tour, but I've harvested from this bed three times now, and I can't keep up with how many chamomile flowers this bed is producing. Send help. <laughs> One of the ways that I have continuously been able to harvest twice off of my pepper plants is because while they're growing in my plant room, when I see that they start to have flowers, I leave the flowers. Now I know that sometimes doing that will stunt the plant because the plant is then putting all its energy into growing that pepper. But I feel that it works in my favor to allow the plants to grow these peppers that I then harvest and then the plants produce more flowers and more peppers. And so here's another bed of bell peppers. And again, there is another pepper there. I have another one down there, another one there. Let's see, I have a couple back there. These peppers here are cayenne pepper. And the reason that I'm growing the cayenne pepper is mainly for the chickens. So I'm going to dry them and add them to their winter treat mix. It helps to give them some warmth. It makes their body produce some energy. And what is this? This here is not a pepper plant. So we're just going to get rid of that. For the past couple of years, I have not been able to grow a cucumber to save my life. Yet, here we are, growing season 2024, and I've got two cucumbers. This squash behind me is butternut squash. And this was one of my mistakes, my garden mistakes. It is growing really good and it is producing as well. However, I have it on an arch trellis and it's a bush variety and I didn't realize when I went into my seeds, I usually keep the bush variety squash together and the vining squash together and somehow this got into the wrong uh, area and so this is a bush variety or semi bush I think it sends out like maybe one foot runners or something like that and so I have this on either side of this beautiful arch trellis and uh, it's never gonna fill it but let me show you all right so like I said I have it on either side of this arch trellis and how beautiful would it have been to be this lush and covering up the whole trellis? Anyways, uh, you know, we all make gardening mistakes and this is one of them for me this year. I don't wanna just show you the beautiful stuff. I wanna show you the things that aren't necessarily going very well for me as well. So this is zucchini. And to date, I have harvested two zucchinis. Now you can see that there are two here that I need to harvest, 
but there are five plants here and you would not know it by the size of them. They are super tiny and they're not really producing. I really think that the Japanese beetles got to them and they are suffering, really trying to get going again. One of the things we did with the last two zucchinis was we sliced them really thin. We put them into some flour. We then soaked them into or dipped them into a uh, scrambled egg mixture and then put a bit of breadcrumbs and spices on them and we fried them up and oh my gosh, they were delicious. So we're probably going to do something similar like that tonight with the two that I just harvested. So I've seen some videos where people are actually eating their sunflower heads. They harvest them, they remove this part here so you just see the seeds. They grill them face down and then they put them in a dish. They cover them with a sauce of your choice, some kind of creamy sauce and che cheesy creamy sauce with herbs and whatnot and they bake it in the oven for a little bit and then they just cut into it with a knife and fork. Have you done this before? At which point do you actually harvest the sunflower? So the one I just showed you, all the petals have fallen off. Um, is that the right time? Or is it now when the petals are on uh, before the bugs get at it? I've harvested sunflowers before for the sunflower seeds and I have found worms in them sometimes. And so I have to really pick and choose which sunflowers I'm gonna keep so that I can roast them for us to eat. How do you know that the sunflower head doesn't have bugs in it? Like, I know we wanna eat the food that we grow, but I also don't wanna eat bugs. And so, like, I'm just curious. Like, I've seen people cut into them and just, eat it. And so my question to you is, is there a certain variety that are, you know, less susceptible to those worms that sunflower heads can get? Or am, was I picking them too late because I wanted the seeds and not necessarily for cooking? Because I think that you have to, I think you have to harvest these a little bit sooner so that the shell isn't too hard. I don't know, leave me some comments below if you've done this before. So I mentioned uh, that I really am loving growing calendula. I come out here almost daily and harvest all the open flowers. And it still amazes me that I come out here and I harvest all the open flowers on both uh, beds of, of calendula that I have and the blooms keep coming. Currently I have half of a mason jar full of dried calendula soaking in sweet almond oil because I'm gonna try my hand at making a face cream. I'm so excited. It's gonna take about six to eight weeks for the calendula to infuse the oil before I can make it, but I'm excited for it. So I did some cleanup on my Egyptian walking onions and I thought I would share what the bulbs actually look like. A lot of you ask me, well, what does the bulb look like? You know, is it big? And I usually try to tell people that it's not like a, um, a nice big Spanish onion. It's a lot smaller than that. And so normally I would leave my onions or my Egyptian walking onions in the ground for about two years. I find that that gives them enough time to get fairly big. Um, and in the meantime, I can use the greenery that comes from them as chives. And then I can use those little tiny onions on top as well, or I can replant them. So what I wanted to do this year is pull them out. So I pulled all of my Egyptian walking onions out. Uh, reason being the bed was new and I really wanted to uh, amend it and then replant it. And so that's what I've done. I took all of the, let me see here. I took all of the little onions that were at the tops of these and I replanted them in that bed. Plus I probably planted another hundred of them 
down near my rock wall. And so before the summer's even done, I will start to see greenery that I can use again as tribes. And so I just wanted to show you what the bulbs look like. So this is one. Now I'm gonna show you two different ones. They were both planted at the same time. And there you go, there's another one. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, remove the roots. I'm going to cut this big hard uh, stem off and then I'm gonna put them through my food processor on the slicing feature and I'm gonna freeze them. So during the winter months when I don't have any onions to make soups or stews or whatever I wanna do, I can just pull out one of these bags and call it a day. These here are my shishito peppers. Now, I tried these peppers maybe three years ago. Um, Jess from Roots and Refuge suggested it. She showed us how to cook them. I was like, I'm doing that. Bought the seeds and planted them. And I thought at the time that I must have got all my seeds mixed up because I didn't get the same size or look that she got. And I thought to myself, eh, I don't like these very much. And I didn't grow them for the next couple of years. And then I was going through my seeds this year and I thought, oh, why don't I try them again? Maybe I got my seeds mixed up and you know, if I did, I don't know where they went. But anyways, I tried them again. Let's take a look at what these look like. I believe when I did my first tour, I did make a comment about, oh, I think this is a bell pepper. I must have got it mixed up on the other side of, of all of these plants. Look at the size of these pepper plants or peppers. These are not shishitos. Like, these are not what they look like when I watch Jess cook them up. I, I don't even understand. Okay, like, let's look over here. I would understand maybe if one of them was like this. Yeah, I got them mixed up. <sighs> The only thing I can think of is that the seed packet was wrong. And so I'm gonna have to buy some more. I think I'm gonna buy them from another uh, seed company. I think I got these from Baker Creek and try them again next year. In addition to the raised beds that I'm growing in, I'm also growing in uh, half barrels. They're half plastic barrels that I got at Walmart when we lived at our old property and I decided that I was going to use them here as well. So I'm just going to walk down the row and I'm going to tell you what I'm growing in each one um, and you can see how healthy everything is. So in this one we're growing uh, bell pepper so it's yellow and orange. This one, we have our eggplant and it is doing really well. Next, we have common mint. So you know that mint is very invasive and you wanna make sure you know prior to planting it where you want it. And this here is a Tidy Treats container tomato plant and it is covered in small tiny tomatoes. Next to it I have some Cosmos. I just love seeing the beautiful color from uh, our, li our living room. Next to it I did some more peppers and it might look like I've done them fairly close and that's because I did. They like being close to each other. This here is something really new to me this year. This is Anise Hyssop and I thought that this would be an amazing addition to my loose leaf tea uh, collection. It tastes like root beer or black licorice. The other thing that is really great about it is if you get poison ivy, which I usually get every year, you can actually chew the leaves up and then rub the, the leaves on you, the chewed leaves. And that's supposed to really help with um, the itch. 
Next to that, we have some more, <laughs> we have some more bell peppers. <laughs> I had so many peppers this year. All right, so next to that, we have jalapenos and we have two of them. So this one looks like it's doing really well. I can see some nice flowers in there. Next to it, we have two khaki squashes. Both of them are doing really good, but it appears that each plant that I've planted is only growing <laughs> one squash. And so I find that quite interesting. Um, in the back of both of these barrels, I've planted more calendula. I have found that calendula is probably my new favorite thing to grow because it, there are just so many uses for the flower. This is sweet potatoes. Next we have carrots. So it's cosmic, um, what does that say? Cosmic purple. Both of these, the leaves are getting a little bit red and purple. I don't know why they're doing that, but the ones in my bed are also doing that. I don't know if that's just getting burned from the sun. Here we have some beans and there are, oh my gosh, lots of beans that I need to harvest. And I just want to say that the color of these plants, such a pretty, pretty green color. Now, this big monstrosity next to it is purple potatoes. So I was able to get my hands on some purple potatoes off of a lady that lives near me. And she said that at first she wasn't sure that they were gonna grow anything. And then all of a sudden they just took off. And that's basically what these have done. It's crazy how big they are. One of the things that I did was I planted some in a barrel and I planted some in our chicken feed bags. So I just thought, why not give it a try? It might be pretty easy to cut the bag open and just dump everything out. So next to it here, we have another um, sweet potato vine. And so I think in this one, I have three or four slips that I planted. This here I mentioned in my last video, it was a bit of a flop in the sense that uh, this nasturtium was supposed to be climbing and it would have looked beautiful on this old wooden ladder that I have um, standing over it, except that uh, I haven't seen any vines coming out. Nothing seems to be growing. So I feel like eh, I probably won't do this next year. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm going to grow nasturtium. Uh, again, I really feel like this year um, the calendula and chamomile were my favorite. So this here was a bit of an experiment for me. So the other sweet potato containers that I showed you were actually slips. This one here was a sweet potato that I had forgotten about in my cupboard that started to grow eyes on it. And I thought, why not just stick it in this container and see what happens? And it is probably a little bit healthier. The leaves look fuller and healthier than that first one that I showed you. So this here is a uh, butterfly pea. And again, I mentioned in my last video that it was a bit of a flop. These really aren't growing the way I need them to grow. It's a very tropical plant and living in zone 5b where in in Canada where our weather can change like from day to day it's it's probably not the the vine for me to grow what I have plopped in there is a cucumber plant so I ended up having extra cucumber plants and I didn't know what to do with so I thought why not throw them in there so let me just continue on this way here we have our fava beans. So I'm really excited for those to start growing. Um, I like popping or um, shelling the beans out and sauteing them up and uh, a little bit of salt and pepper and they are so, so delicious. This here was a bit of an experiment. So like I mentioned earlier, I am basil rich. I have so much basil. I have dried it. Um, 
for tea, for cooking. Like I'm in abundance of this basil that I don't even know what to do with it now. So I thought, why not try a little bit of an experiment? They tell you how to prune your basil to take it from the, the, when there's three stems, you take the middle one so that it bushes out. Well, I didn't have time for that. I needed to cut it. I wanted to fill up my dehydrator with everything else that was in there. So I literally chopped it, like chopped it. You can see in the back that I left half of it and I chopped the front. This is blue spice basil and it's growing back. It's growing back. So that's the proof in the pudding, I guess you would say, is that you don't need to prune it by taking that middle one or making sure you always take the middle one on a stem and leave the rest to branch out. Just cut it. It is such an aggressive grower. I I'm all, I'm thankful it's not a perennial right now because my garden would be <laughs> covered in four different types of basil. Although, would that be so bad? <laughs> I think I'm going to end the tour here. It is starting to uh, spit out and um, we're heading to pickleballs. So I'm going to say thank you so much for spending your time with me and have a great day.